the pleasure first to announce that Muhammad Ali is a, is, a, is a special person in my life like he was for people around the world. And it's a pleasure to be able to pay tribute to Muhammad Ali and also to be one to talk about his philosophy, his way of life, his culture, and yes, even his religion. This is this day is also a holy month for many Muslims, and just almost less than a week prior, he lost his life battling Parkinson's disease. Muhammad Ali left us a legacy, a legacy that's second to none. He's the most photographed, he's the most well-known individual in the world. This is not my saying, it's what many, many analytics have talked about. Muhammad Ali had an impact in my life. I met him first in 1971 in my hometown of New Jersey where he was promoting the Joe Frazier fight. Myself and uh, a younger friend of mine who had a little eye on Joe Frazier, who at that point was the heavyweight champion of the world. When Muhammad Ali came to that region theater to promote his fight. He made it with a bunch of young kids around him. He came out of his box and he was doing what Muhammad Ali do, talking stuff and laughing, playing with the kids. And I remember we going to do that my, my guy who said he liked Joe Frazier. And that day, I became a immortal fan of Muhammad Ali. I became a, a different person. He impressed me from that point on. I went back and I talked to my mom and let her know that I met my mom and she raised my mother all the time. Even after his loss, I never ever bet against Muhammad Ali. I never ever, even in his fight against the big George Foreman, I confidently said Muhammad Ali gonna find a way to win that fight. Or tomorrow, Wednesday, June 8th, beginning at 5 p.m., we will pay tribute to this late great humanitarian, athlete, Muslim, and great American. We will start first in our gymnasium here at the Fred Exler Recreation Center and our boxing gym where there will be a boxing demonstration and there will be a 10 count bell ring of size in tribute to Muhammad Ali. Then here at my center, at the Rock Community Center and the National United Council headquarters here, we'll talk about the life and time of Muhammad Ali and we will all have a universal prayer vigil in his honor. We ask people to come out this Wednesday, June 8th, beginning at 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Fred Exler Recreation Center, 513 Richmond Street, here in Elizabeth, New Jersey. I can tell you this much. Although Muhammad Ali had passed on the back of his board, he left behind his philosophy and his great teachings about love and humility. You know, I, I can say this, that what we all can agree on, black or white, brown or yellow, whatever political ideology you for, whatever your religious preference is, that this man, Muhammad Ali, he made the impossible possible. He made this world pay attention to his own faults and he was able to set a tone and a moment for even our youngest of young can take it to his heart and bring it to the soul of men. Lastly, I'll say there's one thing I would say about in the midst of all the transition of Muhammad Ali, all the media coverage about him,
passing on, what have you, did one thing I had paid attention to. His daughter, Hana Ali, was quoted in one of the newspapers that as his, her father lay there in the bed, and all the children came around and kissed him, and Dicky Bond was saying uh, Islamic prayer and what have you. Muhammad held on. He held on, literally held on. She said she grabbed his hand and squeezed tight. And the children whispered and said, Muhammad, Daddy, it's okay now. You can go. All his organs and his body left. His brain. All parts of his organs just left. Everything just stopped. Ali said his heart kept beating for 30 minutes, even when everything was else was medically dead. His heart. And I'll leave you with this. It was the heart of Ali, Muhammad Ali, that made us all proud. And I ask you all to join me and hashtag heart of Muhammad Ali. his heart that gave us the generosity and the pleasure to say to him and the world that he gave us, thank you.
been, he spent, he meant so much to our society that we didn't know to understand what he was doing at the time that he was doing. Um, and I think that that's what you, that's what you consider to be great. Um, um, and those who are great, they have it and don't even know they have it. Um, but I, I think he just was trying to be respectful to his people. Uh, and, and his people at the time, I think it was probably the probably would say they was um, African American, but however, his people became the entire world. Because this is the most loved man in the past 60 years probably that we came through here. Um, Muhammad Ali affected people that wasn't born during the time of, of him having motor skills, his, his, all his motor skills, let alone his, having, his, having his great. So he had a great impact on myself, on my children, and um, I think he will have, um, have an effect, profound effect on those who come after my children, you know, my grandchildren, on um, both of you, inshallah, time of my day. So, Muhammad Ali, I wish you the best. Uh, I, I pray for your soul. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expand your grave and that you'll be, you'll, you'll, you'll be blessed with Jenna. So, don't want to take a rock to block by the country. You want to say something? You want to say something about Ali? Mm -hmm. Y'all want to say something about Ali? Y'all want to say something about Ali? You don't got no option if you got to do it. You can't even pray this whole time. Go ahead, go. First, I'd like to say, Salaam Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Salaam Ali. Um, I always can't really describe what you've done for my generation. I know the first generation that was able to watch you, it was right there. Everything just happened on the phone right before your eyes. But I'm looking at everything in hindsight through stories and through a lot of movies and you are a great inspiration. Not only because of your athletic ability, but also because of the fact that you was a Muslim and you set down the foundation of what Islam truly is about. Um, today we face a lot of turmoil with Islam, Islamophobia, but you are truly a man for humankind, not just the black which was a man for everybody. He was the embodiment of a true soul that cared about everybody and the well-being of all. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and for my generation to speak on the hand of people being told the stories about Muhammad Ali. So I'm like, okay, you want to wrap it up? Yeah. You sure you want to say this conversation? All right. Okay, one, two, three, done. Hi, we're standing here at the, what we call now the Rock Community Center, which is home of the National United Youth Council Incorporated. Um, we got maybe uh, seven more months of uh, President Barack Hussein Obama's presidency. And in almost uh, less than six months left of the year, it will be a good time to now pay tribute to this president, the first African American president uh, of the United States of America. And the thing that he did do, first, the most important thing he did coming into office was to pretty much save the economy and then create a, at least a health system that can also impact on the millions without health. Uh, benefits and what have you. This president, in his own imagery, um, inspired a lot of young people, not just African American and poor people, but just young people in general, to inspire no one, absolutely no one in their wildest dream, has, at least I, I'm one of those persons, didn't think I was going to see an African American president in my lifetime. But I was fortunate to not only see an African American president, but also vote for him not once but twice. So in that, um, on this table we have just some memorable things that that um, pay tribute to the great uh, president Barack Hussein Obama and the things that he's done over the years, just coming in, just his year coming into office had impact the entire world. Even some of the downfalls of the politics that come with it, you know, the, the right wing political that just wasn't going to reach his mouth, one piece of this legislature. 
not one piece of his ideas, not one piece of his philosophy. This president stayed firm and he continued to address the needs and the issues of the American public. So we pay tribute to this president and um, we pay tribute to what he's done for us. And I can tell you this one. This particular picture tells it all. Where his hands are ball, his fists are tight. And no matter what the people who said, what people attempted to do, this president, among many others, he's the 44th, this one stood firm in animosity, even in racism. He stood firm for this country. And I think that this country owed this gentleman quite a bit. So, this, this right here, this table will sit in my center forever, as long as I'm here. So when young people pass this table, they can go through the books, they can see some of the stuff that, that the president has done, and books here they can pick up and read about the president, but more important, be inspired. Right now, I'm getting ready to go inside and vote for. Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to vote for. I'm going to vote for Bernie Sanders for president uh, here on Election Day, June 7th, this Tuesday, right now. Go on to vote. It's an important vote. It's your right to vote. People fought and died for the right to vote. So that's why, no matter what, no vote should be wasted. I see it's kind of slow around here, but there should be no reason why anybody should stay home today. Vote or for the primary and vote and most importantly vote in the general election. Very good.